For many parents, January can be an anxious month. And it's not just because they're occupied with the task of finding a school for their child, but the school requirement complicates their life. Shifa Mwesje is a parent of two, but also a caretaker of three other children. Like any other parent, she is preparing to send her children back to school. Unfortunately, this time of the year is not always an easy one for her financially. The beginning of term is always a heart, a heartache. For me, I always try, I know, because this is coming, I know when they get into third term, I know that school will start in January, and January is always a hard time. So I try and prepare before January to see that at least I have school fees because I know the school is not mine. Moesi just spent six million shillings as her children start school. This is minus hundreds of thousands spent on school requirements needed by the school and also her children. Some are in day school and the other one is in boarding school and it's the kind of boarding school where you have to send her to school with grab or what they call grab and all the, requi the other requirements. So for her would be about 300, 400,000. So if I add on, and that is without things like a bag and these other requirements that school asks for, uh, no shoes. So if I have to buy durish, durable shoes, that's about 100,000, this 300 already. So I would say a little over a million shillings. But then it comes to the clubs. When I was in school, I didn't have to pay for drama or music or languages. I didn't have to. Now, every extra thing without what they do in class, you have to pay for it. Prior to school term opening, children normally present shopping lists to their parents, sometimes lists that take almost half of their school fees. But because of the increasing school demands, Mwesije has had to readjust and also change the schools of her children. I have had to revise my budget and how I do things because it's just too much. I cannot keep up with my, with my, um, with my salary. To be honest, if I just relied on my salary, it wouldn't work. So, but neither can I sit around and say, oh my God, oh my kids are what, oh I'm so poor, my salary is not enough. Nobody cares. Your children have to go to school. So you have to find a way. So what I've had to do, like the one of the, uh, the girl who is in secondary school, she was in a much more expensive school. I had to bring her to a school that I could at least afford that was a bit cheaper. But she's also doing quite well there. I guess the environment is good for her. She's even a head girl. The other ones who are in primary as well, I've had to, to bring them to schools that I can actually afford in this time. This does not only affect the children psychologically, but also parents who shoulder the burden of buying new school uniforms. It's not good for children to take them from one school to the next because they lose their, their friends and actually they have been complaining that, Mommy, why do we have to leave our school for us? We want the other school, but I have to move them. Every parent's dream is for their children to go to the best schools available. But with the rising cost of living, this is increasingly becoming difficult. We have to know that there are one, two, one, two, like about five or six schools that everyone wants to take their children to. They are not the only schools that are in Kampala, and they are not the only good schools. Look at the results this year. There are so many other schools out there on the outskirts of Kampala that actually perform very well. We will all end up at the same university. Shifa Mwesje is now calling for government intervention and rain on schools, or else the number of school dropouts may rise again. So I just don't understand why government is looking on as these private schools are taking us for a ride. What happened to the big, the Chitantes and Buganda Roads were good performing schools. Now they've let all those teachers go to the private schools where, I don't think they pay them that well anyway, but they, there they are, where they're charging us an arm and a leg, building bigger buildings and taking in, you will find a school that has a thousand students paying over a million shillings. And the government is looking on, I mean, we need help. She also questions the education system regarding financing and what institutions pay and how fair it is. I don't understand why I, who is studying a master's degree at Makere University, pays the same amount of money as a child in primary school. What are they learning? John Speak and James Grant? I mean, at least take my child to school and teach them how to make a boat. I will know that I'm paying for a technical skill, how to bake a cake. Shila Tsimem Gisha, NBS, live at nine.